Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. I want to give all praises and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and peace and blessings to you, brothers and sisters, throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the second coming from our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. This is Yahweh Yahweh. Just going into a lesson, of course, if you've seen um, our block lesson uh, last week concerning the who the Greeks and the Gentiles were in the New Testament, you know, who that was being referred to. And this is really just a continuation of just kind of going into that subject, uh, as seeing that some people uh, were confused about it. And, uh, you know, we're just going to kind of just go into this just for the sake of edification uh, to take away the confusion, you know, and just kind of get a have brothers and sisters receive a better understanding of who those Greeks and Gentiles were. And uh, why some of the things that were going on um, in some of the events throughout the New Testament um, were occurring, okay? Because uh, one of the big things is that our people don't have a good understanding and concept of their own history. Um, and their own history is told by their oppressors. And uh, because of that, when information is brought in concerning the overall history of our people, especially dating back 2,000 years ago, um, it's very hard for, for you know a lot of our people to grasp you know what's really going on. Right. So now when you go into Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64, this is talking about a curse that would happen to the Israelites. OK, because we as we know that the law was given to the Israelites and this was uh, something that was specifically messaged to us, what would happen to us if we did not continue to follow in the commandments of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And uh, we know that in this day and age, as we have a great awakening among our people, that there are certain things that they're not going to understand. And we under we, we are very much aware of that. So this is, again, just for edification. OK, so when you go into this, it says that. And there and there we will serve our other gods. OK, so when we were scattered, we would end up serving other gods among the people that we were scattered amongst. OK, even neither that any that our fathers did know. OK, and it's very um, apparent because when you go into through, um, you know, the time all the way up into, I guess, the you could say the Babylonian captivity. Um, or even, you know, the Assyrian captivity from the Northern Kingdom, there was gods that, you know, that was known back then, but even speeding up to the Greek and Roman captivity and the rise of their empires, there were new gods that were rosen up that our people had no, no, that knew nothing about. Okay. They, they knew about the gods of Egypt. They knew about the gods of Canaan. They knew about the gods of Babylon, uh, but but later on, you know, when the Greek and Roman Empire rose, they didn't know about the, these other gods. So we're going to kind of go into it. We're going to jump over to uh, Acts, the 19th chapter and kind of go into this. And then we'll kind of just go in reverse to show you, you know, what led to these, you know, what led to this particular, you know, type of uh, idolatry that was going on at the time. So this is Acts chapter 19 and verse 21. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem saying after I have been there I must go I must also see Rome so he went into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him Timotheus and Erastus but he himself stayed in Asia for a season and at the same time there arose no small stir about that way for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying they be that they be no gods which are made with hands. Okay, so Paul was purposing to go back to Jerusalem uh, from Macedonia and Achaia, and he ended up in Asia and he ended up staying there. Now, this Asia that's being referred to in the scriptures is actually talking about Asia Minor, or as today it's called, is Turkey. Okay. 
Now he stayed in that area. He stayed in Ephesus and he was teaching the gospel and telling the people that there are no gods that are made with hands and basically telling them that they should they should basically repent and believe on Yahweh Shai. Okay, now these people that he was talking to is the same people that were under the curses in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 64 that were going to be scattered and were going to be worshiping other gods that neither them nor their fathers knew. Okay, now these men came up to Paul saying that he was basically turning away the people from basically worshiping all right, the idols, which this is how they were making their money, all right, off of basically creating these idols of, uh, of Diana, okay? Now, when you go further on, in verse 27, it says, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and have magnif her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. Okay, now so they had a temple, of course, for for this uh, goddess that they worship. Okay, I think the the actual temple during the time of the Greeks was called the Temple of uh, Artemis, and then later on it changed to Diana during the time of the rise of the Romans. They just basically just remixed. Uh, the same gods of the Greeks and just gave them different names. Okay, uh, that's that's all it was. That just was just a way of them putting their stamp and imprint on it. But this is what had been going on for quite some time. All right. Now, when you go, you know, further on, you actually see the beginning, pretty much, of the stage of this particular level of idolatry under the the Greco-Roman Empire, as it's also called historically okay uh, now when you go into second maccabees uh chapter six we'll just start at the top it says not long after this the king sent an old man of athens to compel the jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of of yahweh now this was happening during the time of antiochus epiphanes which antiochus epiphanes came into rule around the time of 175 BC okay now the Greeks took over around 332 333 BC under the time the time of Alexander okay and he died and he's, his empire was split into four and the area that we were under all right during that time was the, was a part known as the Seleucid Empire all right which was ruled later on of course by uh, Antiochus Epiphanes Okay, so this is just giving you a time frame of when this started to occur as far as the official level of Hellenization all right, of our people in that territory. And we'll, and we'll get more information that even Esau documents that this did occur and how it affected our nation. Okay, and this is the reason why it's important, brothers and sisters, to have that Apocrypha and to read the book of Maccabees to give you a better understanding of what was going on in the new testament especially starting from the book of acts and onward when you start reading the letters okay you have a better understanding now going further on it says and to pollute also the temple in jerusalem and to call it the temple of jupiter olympus and that in gerizim of jupiter the defender of strangers as they did desire that dwelt in that plate in the place okay so during that time, you had basically wicked men that were among our nation that were basically being influenced to make us basically go into idolatry, to follow the ways right, of, the, of the Greeks at that particular time. Now, you see here that they wanted to actually change the temple in Jerusalem to the temple of Jupiter. This shows you a purposeful Hellenization that was being put in place not only, even in Jerusalem even in our land okay now as we go further on in verse 3 it says the coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people for the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places and besides that brought in things that were not lawful Okay, so basically the whole temple was basically just turned into, you know, it was just basically turned into a place of partying and uh, and debauchery 
in, in which you know some of our people uh, took part in. Okay. So then you go further on. It says verse five, the altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbid it. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days or ancient feasts fast or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Okay? And it became unlawful during that time. And a lot of our people consented to that particular behavior. And, I, and what it is with a lot of our people that have uh, come to at least the minor knowledge of knowing that they're Israel. So this is part of the, the history that has to be known. All right to have a good understanding of what's going on okay now when you go further on i'm gonna just kind of read this for, for edification's sake to kind of get a better understanding it says and in the day of the king's birth every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices when the fast of Bacchus was kept the jews were compelled to go in the procession to Bacchus carrying ivy moreover there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles should be put to death, then uh, might a man have seen the present misery. Okay? And then going further on to have a good understanding of the circumcision. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, whom when they had openly led round about the city, the babes handing, uh, handing at their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall. Okay? Because it was illegal to also circumcise during this time. And you had a lot of our people that were fleeing. Okay? When you go into it, it says here in verse 11, and others that had ran together into caves nearby to keep the sabbath secretly being discovered by philip were all burnt together because they made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day i mean so i mean this is what was going on and, and this is the you have to have that understanding that a lot of our people went into idolatry during this time they started basically doing what the other heathen were doing that were also Hellenized. And it tells you that the heathen that were neighboring cities, the heathen that were round about, were also compelled to do the same. Okay, and that's what you call Hellenization. Now, we're going to go in, ahead and go into this in the uh, Wikipedia. This is a Hellenistic Judaism. Now, what we have is not Judaism. Okay, what we had was, the, was a tradition that was passed down, you know, that was given from the Most High. All right, Yahweh to Moses to give to us, and which was also carried over from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was our heritage. No, we, we do not practice Judaism. Judaism, as it is known today, is actually going, is based on the Babylonian Talmud, which we do not follow. It is not part of the scriptures. Okay, but for the sake of this, they are just kind of uh, go into the history as it is known during this time. Now it says. Um, Hellenic Judaism was a form of Judaism in the ancient world that combined Jewish religious traditions with elements of Greek culture, okay, which is that was what was going on. They were fusing the Feast of Bacchus in the temple. They were basically sacrificing unclean foods. They were, that's the type of stuff that was going on. They were celebrating uh, the king's birthday. They were doing those things, and that was being done uh, by a lot of the priests, okay, starting with, uh, with Jason, Okay, and so when you go into the book of Maccabees, it shows you how they were basically very instrumental in bringing in a lot of these customs. Okay, until until the fall of the Roman Empire and the Muslim conquest of the Eastern Macedonian, the main centers of Hellenic Judaism, okay, Hellenic Judaism were Alexandria and Antioch, northern Syria, now Turkey. Now, why would there be Hellenic Judaism if they were not Jews in these cities? They had to be in Turkey, which is Asia, and they had to be in Alexandria, right, which is in Egypt. The two main Greek urban settlements, okay, of the Middle East and North Africa area, both founded at the end of the 4th century in the wake of the conquest of Alexander the Great. Because during the time of Alexander the Great, 
when he came on the scene, that's when a lot of our people started being scattered because you had a lot of battles that were going on, you know, from Syria all the way down to Israel between the Ptolemy, the, the Ptolemaic dynasty, right, and the Seleucid Empire. So both empires were warring back and forth. And during that time, there was a lot of our people being scattered to places like uh, Egypt and to pretty much Turkey. And that's how a lot of our people ended up being under that influence even more away from Jerusalem to be more Hellenized. That's the reason why even Esau understands that these were two heavy, uh, two main areas of Hellenic Judaism. The one being in Alexandria, Egypt, and the other one being in Antioch in Turkey. Okay, and we were spread out through Turkey as well, including Ephesus. Okay, now it says the Hellenic Judaism also existed in Jerusalem during the second temple period where there was conflict between Hellenizers and traditionalists, sometimes called Juda Judaizers. Now, who were these Hellenizers, all right, that were in conflict with each other? These were those that were had went and started following the customs, all right, of the Greeks, okay, of the Greco Roman Empire. Okay, that's the reason why there was such a division between what people call the Jew nor the Greek, which you read throughout the the, the New Testament, but somehow nobody wants to say just Jews, so just Jews and Greeks are the only ones that could believe. Somehow, some way that you, you miss out on the Chinese. You, what about the Syrians? What about the Babel? What about the Babylonians? But y'all don't talk about that because deep down inside, a lot of a lot of Jakes that are pushing against the the, the the fact that our people were Hellenized, a good chunk of our people were Hellenized during that time and had gone into idolatry, including the worship of, of the goddess Diana, which is found in Acts the 19th chapter, they would then have to admit this exact thing that's being written, which is historically documented. Even Esau admits it, okay? Now, going uh, further on, it's, uh, you know, it's funny because actually Esau puts in here the uh, neither Jew nor Greek okay now when you go and says there's neither Jew nor Greek it says ethnic cultural and social tensions with the Hel Hellenistic Jewish world so who is the Hellenistic Jewish world man it shows you that Esau knows exactly what he's talking about when he comes to this when he comes into this point the Hellenistic Jewish world this is the neither Jew nor Greek okay so the Hellenistic Jews were those that were in idolatry those that were worshiping uh idols throughout the the greco-roman empire were partly overcome by the emergence of the new typically antio antiochian middle eastern greek doctrine okay so these were people that were under the influence of that were hellenized J jews that were hellenized and it even goes even further it says here the efforts were probably facilitated by the arrival of the fourth wave of Greek-speaking newcomers of the Cilicia, South Turkey, and Southwestern Syria, uh, Syroprat Jews, or Cyrenian Jews, meaning Jews from Libya. Okay? So you had Jews in Libya, you had Jews in Greece, you had Jews in Turkey. All those different places you had Jews that were there, and they were under the influence of, they were Hellenized. Okay? And this is what is being hidden in, in, the, in the eyes of people in the churches and to many people that, that call themselves Israel even today. So kind of just moving a little bit for, further on, this is just talking about religion in ancient Rome. Religion in ancient Rome encompasses the ancestral ethnic religion of the city of Rome and that the Romans used to define themselves as a people as well as adopted religious practices of the people brought under Roman rule. Okay, plain. The people that were brought under Roman rule were forced and assimilated into these different idols and to these different religious practices. When they, when you are ruled over by a people, they, they force a, you as a nation to basically worship their idols. That That is what happens. Okay? Now, this is Gallo-Roman religion, just to kind of go into, just to, you know, go a little bit further. It just says, was a fusion of the traditional religious practices of the Gauls, who were originally Celtic peep speakers and the Roman Hellenic uh, religion introduced in the region under the Roman imperial rule. It was a result of selective acculturation. All right, now we're going to go into that word for acculturation. 
Now, it's, it's no wonder that Esau even puts the northern kingdom, and primarily in this example, which would be the tribe of Gad, as an example of what acculturation is. And this is what happened to our people. Acculturation is the process of cultural change and, psycho and psychological change that results between results following meeting between cultures. Okay, that's what you call a culture clash, and that is it's a it says a psychological change. So there is a psychological change that begins to occur when a group of people, all right, such as the Edomites, who were the Greco who ruled the Greco-Roman Empire, introduced these things to our people. And then over a course of decades, centuries, when you look into it, this is what happened. By the time that Paul came on the scene, it already had been a, almost 400 years, okay, of our people being under the influence of the Greco-Roman culture. That's the reason by the time you get to Ephesus, those people were, were done. They were in idolatry. And many of these people were descendants of Israelites that had settled in those regions. Those were considered very heavy settlement areas or co colony areas that were built up and settled during the time of the Greco-Roman Empire. All right. Now, when you go further on, it says the effects of acculturation can be seen at met multiple levels in both interacting cultures. Acculturation is the is the direct change of one's culture through dominance over another's culture through either military or political conquest which is what happened to our people. It happened to our people in Babylon. It happened to our people in the Greco-Roman Empire. And it's plain and simple, okay? At the group level, acculturation often results in change in culture, customs, and social institutions. Notable group level effects of acculturation often include changes in food, clothing, and language, okay? So that's why our people were, were eating food sacrifice unto idols that's why they were eating food with the blood thinking that it was okay because they were pushed to do that it's why they were wearing togas and we're not wearing garments uh the regular traditional garments anymore you know that's why they were language even changed they, they were speaking greek okay that's plain and simple that should be understood that's what happens when the people get conquered at the level, individual level, differences in the way individuals acculturate can be shown to associate not just with the change in daily behavior, but with numerous measures of psychological and physical well-being. Okay? And this is something that Esau studies. He understood what he did to, you know, our brothers and sisters, all right, that were over here. Okay? Okay? He had them wearing not he has them wearing their garments. And now many of the people that are the natives of the Americas of the Northern Kingdom, they can't speak their native language no more. They speak English, they speak, they speak French, they speak Spanish, they speak Portuguese. That's what happens, okay? When another nation comes and dominates us. Okay, and we're gonna read this. This is to finish it off. This is Psalms chapter 106 and verse 34. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom Yahweh commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted. Thus they were defiled with their own works, and went a whoring, with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of Yahweh kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance, and he gave them into the hand of the heathen, or I wish the number one heathen is Esau, or who basically um, influenced our people into Hellenization. That and they that hated them ruled over them. Isn't it very apparent that Edomites hate us? Read comment boards. Go on anything related to our people, whether it be sports, whether it be daily news, even if a Jake gets innocently killed, you're going to see how they talk down on Jake, how they hate us, how it's just, it's inborn in them. And guess what? The Most High has them ruling over us. Verse 42, their enemies also oppressed them and they were brought un into subjection under their hand. 
okay and when they're be, when you're brought into subjection in the hand that's when they bring about this influence of hellenization which was basically occurring that's who the greeks were when it was referring to what neither jew nor greek that was referring to the hellenized all right jews or the hellenized israelites and the on the opposite side the jews were talking about the ones that were not hellenized okay and that's the reason why paul was sent out with barnabas as part of the ministry to the gentiles to bring them back to the to the father through faith in yahweh shamashiach so hopefully this is edifying and again i want to give all praises and glory to yahweh in the name of our lord and savior yahweh shai and peace and blessings to you brothers and sisters throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the deliverance from our lord and savior yahweh shai shalom